The Scanner recently did a story about black war heroes during World War I, and that caught your interest. Well, first of all, it was a great story and an important story. Um, you focused on the, in World War I, and in particular on a very famous National Guard unit out of New York, the 15th uh, New York National Guard Regiment, which later became the 369th so-called Harlem Hellfighters. It was the most decorated unit in World War I. They fought some of the bloodiest battles on the ground in France. And as it happens, my grandfather was a captain in the regiment. So it, it meant a lot to me personally. My grandfather lived to be 102. So he was uh, in my life for uh, a little over half of my life. And he was extremely proud of his service. And to understand sort of his experience, you have to go back to New York State in the 1913, 1914 period. And as we know from our history, we were still a segregated country, and African Americans were largely second class citizens in their own country. Uh, my grandfather uh, went to college uh, and graduated in 1910, 1911, and he was a uh, he was one of the greatest uh, college football players of all time. He played tackle, was made All-American, won a national championship. And he then later went into public service and got elected to the legislature. In 1916, he volunteered for a new National Guard unit that was being formed by Colonel Bill Hayward called the New York 15th. Now, why an all-black regiment? Well, at that time in our history, uh, we had strict segregation in the military. In fact, black soldiers and white soldiers very rarely mixed, didn't fight together. So the only way that patriotic African Americans could serve would be to be in an all-black regiment. Uh, General Pershing, who was in charge of, of the Army, was not comfortable assigning them to an American unit. And so the 369th was loaned to the French. And they served with the French regiment uh, they fought in some of the most important conflicts of the war, certainly the bloodiest conflicts. They took heavy casualties, but they served with great honor on the front lines, wearing French uniforms and carrying French rifles, and here's what's just fascinating, flying the flag of New York State, an unprecedented occurrence in military history, to be assigned to another country and to carry the flag of your state, not your country. My grandfather served with uh, a number of the very famous people in that regiment, uh, people like Noble Sissel, who was a great band leader who went in to volunteer and later was part of the Harlem Renaissance. But he also served with Sergeant uh, Henry Johnson. And the Scanner's piece was about his heroism. Henry Johnson is one of the most famous soldiers in American history uh, who happened to be black. Um, he was part of the 369th. He served in France. He served during the famous Battle of the Argonne Forest. And in July of 1918, he and another soldier were in a, were in a forward position on a lookout. And they were attacked by an estimated 24 German soldiers. Sergeant Johnson, according to the record of the event, repelled all 24. Germans, killing some, wounding others, but they all, the others, the survivors, retreated. In the course of the conflict, he was injured over 21 times and was shot three times. Uh, he wasn't actually recovered until the following day when his uh, unit came forward and brought him back heavily wounded. Teddy Roosevelt uh, later uh, when asked to name the bravest people who fought World War I, said that Sergeant Johnson was one of the five bravest Americans to fight in that conflict. Um, uh, but here's the problem. Because he was in an all-black regiment assigned to the French, it was the French government and not the United States government that actually gave him full recognition for his service. But this is extraordinary. He was the first American soldier in history to receive the Croix de Guerre, the Cross of War, uh, which is uh, the highest award the French government gives, with star and with gold palm, meaning the absolute highest tribute that a gov the French government gives to a soldier went to Sergeant Johnson.
he was among the bravest, most heroic figures in American history on a battlefield. As he was black in an all-black regiment assigned to the French army, what eluded him was due recognition by his own government. He died in 1929 and was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. And it took, uh, it took 45 years for him to get partial recognition for his service. In 1996, President Clinton awarded him posthumously the Purple Heart. And in 2003, he received the Distinguished Service Cross. I believe at that time, no African-American soldiers had ever received the Medal of Honor. That was corrected. There is now one, a corporal, who received our highest military award. But he was the only one of all the soldiers who fought uh, and, and fought with great honor. And I think we have to go back to remember that the, the French conflict was very bloody. And hundreds and hundreds of members of the 369th gave their lives on the battlefield. Um, while black troops were in France keeping the world safe for democracy, back home they were still second-class citizens. And I think that's what made your story and the story of Sergeant Johnson so compelling. And this is where my grandfather comes in. At the end of the war, uh, the regiment came back to New York and, um, and they marched up Fifth Avenue, which is a great honor, and they dispersed. And Sergeant Johnson and most of the other black troops hoped that by demonstrating such heroism and patriotism, that when they came back to this country, they would be able to turn the tide and perhaps African Americans would be welcomed to full citizenship. That did not happen. Lynchings continued, segregation continued, Jim Crow, and that is a great shame, a stain on our history. My grandfather was elected to Congress in 1920. One of the first bills that he carried was a bill to end lynching, uh, which ran into stiff opposition, particularly from Democrats. But um, his perhaps proudest accomplishment as a legislator was he was the author of the bill for the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and that is the most honored uh, place site in Arlington National Cemetery. And what is interesting is that an unknown soldier from the French conflict was brought home and buried there. And there are those who believe that it is possible that the unknown soldier is a black soldier. And the lesson of history, I think, is profound. Um, because we have to remember that in the 19-teens, during World War I, when African Americans were fighting to defend this country abroad and risking their lives, they were fighting to defend a country that had still not given them full equal citizenship. So not only was Sergeant Johnson one of the bravest, most heroic soldiers in our history, but we have to remember that he was fighting to defend a country on foreign soil that had denied him full citizenship and would continue to deny him full citizenship through his death in 1929. In fact, it was it took a an executive order by President Truman to once and for all end segregation in the armed forces. So for me, and I think for all of us, the lesson is that, and, and, and the reason I think we should be concerned about righting this historical wrong is, on the basis of what he did on the battlefield and his heroism and valor, he certainly qualifies and deserves the Medal of Honor. There's very little dispute, and this president, President Obama, can right that historical wrong. But on the basis of his character, of willing to fight to defend a country that had not stood shoulder to shoulder with him, he has given us a lesson that also reminds us that our work is not done, that we must be able to rise above sometimes injustice to move forward. And I think as a human being and as a soldier, he's a remarkable role model. And probably in every, every possible measure, uh, has earned the right to have a Medal of Honor awarded to him. It is my hope that a movement currently underfoot, uh, underway will be successful, and I will be working with the Oregon congressional delegation to ask them to join with other uh, congressmen and senators and activists around the country to make sure that Sergeant Johnson gets what he has been denied for almost 100 years, which is the highest military award this country can, can issue, which is the Medal of Honor.